Good morning, BCC. Won't you stand and join us today? Wandered into the night Wanted a place to hide This weary soul This bag of bones And I try with all my mind I just can't win the fight I'm slowly drifting Oh, vagabond And just when I ran down the road, I met a man I didn't know. And he told me that I was not alone. He picked me up, he turned me around, he placed my feet on solid ground. I think the master, I think the savior, because he healed my heart, he changed my I thank God Whoa. I cannot deny what I see Got no choice but to believe Oh, my doubts are burning I got shades in the wind So, so long to my old friends The burning and bitterness you can keep on moving No, you ain't welcome here From now till I walk The streets of gold I'll sing of how you saved my soul This wayward son has found his way back home Another one, I am free, I am free, I am free. Hell lost another one, I am free, I am free, I am free. Hell lost another one, I am free, I am free, I am free. Hell lost another one, I am free, I am free, I am free. Today, give him a shout of praise this morning. Oh, we thank you, Lord. We lift you up, God. Yeah. Hey there, welcome out to Valley Community Church. My name is Caleb. I'm one of the pastors here on staff, and we're honored you're taking time out of your Sunday night to come and hang out with us. Here in just a minute, we're gonna be kicking off a brand new series that we're calling Praise the One. But before we do that, let's check out what's happening here at VCC.
Our giving highlight this month is the Denver Dream Center Christmas project that they do every year. It's an incredible chance for us to partner with them as they give back to their community during the holiday season. If you'd like to be a part of this, you can do one of two things. You can either go online to grainvalley.church and mark your giving as other, or you can grab an envelope on the seat nearby you, mark your giving as other, and everything marked other this month will go directly back to the Denver Dream Center's Christmas project this year. Join us tomorrow night for prayer night at the coffee shop, seven o'clock for an incredible night of prayer and worship. It's gonna be an awesome time that we can come together as a church family and pray over the needs of our church. We're looking forward to it and we hope that you'll join us. Community groups are starting up soon. Be on the lookout for those. We're gonna have some more information next week about these. We love community groups. Life is done better in community. Get plugged into one this semester. And now Pastor Jason's gonna come and kick off our new series, Oh Praise the One. to be in church today. So glad that you're here, excited about all that God is doing. Aren't these decorations awesome? Man, um, I, I'm so thankful. We've got an incredible team of people that, that do incredible things uh, and has prepared us and, and done a lot of stuff in preparation for today. Uh, but uh, Alyssa Caleb's wife is the one that is responsible for all of the, the decor in here today. And didn't she do an outstanding job with this? Awesome. So thankful. So thankful for all that, that make these things possible and for us to be able to celebrate together. Uh, excited because we're starting a, a brand new series that goes perfectly with what we're doing today. Uh, we're, we're calling this series Praise the One. And uh, uh, let me just tell you that... that uh, in, in Scripture, it talks all through Scripture about the people of God who take opportunity, take time to praise Him because of all that God has done. And let's, listen, it, it, we, we've done some of that today. We're going we're gonna to continue in that theme. But it's, it's, it's worth recognizing. And, and the, the people of God from old understood this as well, that it's, it's important to take time, it's important to recognize and to, to praise the one, to praise him for his goodness, for the, the things that he has performed, the, the things that he brings into our life. And so you see this throughout scripture uh, in, in the very beginning, in Genesis, they, they praised him because of, of creation. In, in Revelation, they praised him as the soon and coming king, right? And throughout scripture, you see all different times where the people of God would take opportunity and they would praise him. What does that mean? What does that look like? Why, why do we see throughout scripture that, that God would put in Scripture because it's, it's Him through the Holy Spirit that anointed the people of God to pen the things that we have, the anointed Word of God. Why would the word praise be in Scripture hundreds of times throughout the Bible? Why would we hear the word praise over and over in different ways? In fact, is there are seven different Hebrew words for praise. And, and I'm not going to go into all of those today because, number one, I can't even pronounce them all right. But they, they are important. They, they all get translated in our language as praise, but they all have distinct meanings. And, and, and they're, they're things that, that talk about the importance of praising God, of, of lifting up Him up, of honoring Him, of celebrating His goodness. Praising God is something that the, the people of old knew. This is just something that is necessary to do. 
And, and, and what's, what's interesting is that so often we, in, in, in our everyday life, we, we may celebrate a lot of things. We may praise, to some extent, different things. But Scripture talks over and over, the, 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 the thing that is the most important and, and really that is foundational for the people of God is to take opportunity to praise the one, to praise him who is above everything else, above every other name, Scripture says, right? That we ought to take opportunity to praise him. It's, it's part of the reason that God intended for us to come together regularly and praise him. Amen? And, and, and to sing about and to lift up the name of God. It's why we do what we do. It's why we take the time at the beginning of our service to just praise him. And if I can say so, we have a pretty good group of people up here that praise him pretty awesomely, wouldn't you say? And so we're blessed in that way. We can count our blessings. But, but regardless of that, even on our own, when we may you know, be in our closet and we're, we're or, you know, just at home or, or driving in our car and we're, we're, we have opportunity ourselves to, to praise God on our own. And we may not sound like this. In fact, is we may sound like a drowning cat or something, but it's still praising God. It's beautiful to Him. There's the importance. There's a significance. And throughout this series, over the next few weeks, we're going to look at this and, and look at why it's so important. Why did God put this in place? Why did He want us to take opportunity to praise. There's something significant about it. Let me give you quickly, there, there, there's a ton of reasons, but let me give you quickly uh, three reasons why even in Scripture the people of old d knew that this was so important. Why do we need to praise God? Number one, the Bible commands it. Scripture says you need to praise God, not because God needs it, but because we need it. We need to understand that that. He is the one that is above everything else and the one that we look to. Scripture says, let everything that has breath praise the Lord. If we have breath in our lungs, we need to praise the Lord. Amen? We should take opportunity regularly, not just on Sundays, but we should praise the Lord for the little things and for the big things. For the things that, that we don't always see as great, but we realize later, man, that was such an important thing. Whatever it is, we need, we need to be quick to give praise to God. It, it, we, we are quick oftentimes to, to praise others, to praise ourselves, to praise whatever, but we may not be as quick as we should to praise the one. Scripture says we should. The Bible commands it. We need to make that a priority. Second thing is, praise is an effective weapon against the enemy. It's an effective weapon, and we need to use that weapon. When we praise God, it is, it is a, a, a weapon that goes to bat for us against the things in our life that are trying to come against us. Who is that? We know it as the enemy, the, the, the person that, that was kicked out of heaven, Lucifer himself, who tries to wage war consistently and constantly against the people of God because he hates anything that is of God. But we have weapons that we can combat him with, and praise is one of those. Why do we sing the words that we sing? Many of them are scriptural. Many of them come right out of God's word, and they're powerful. They're, the, scripture says that the word of God is, is living and breathing. It's, it's, a, it's a living thing. 
And, and when we speak those things, it begins to go out and begin to produce and work for us. It's a weapon against our enemy. And when we praise God, it does incredible things. Here's another th- reason is God's worthy of it, right? I mean, it, there, there's nothing that is more worthy of our praise than God himself. And when we praise him, we realize, we recognize, it, it puts our focus back on the fact that he's just worthy. He's worthy of all of our praise, admiration, and honor. And we should take time to do that. Now, the people of old, the, the, the people we read about in Scripture, they understand, stood that there, there, there was great benefit to, to going to God and, and just lifting him up, to praise him. There was, there was incredible benefit Far more benefit than what I'm about to mention to you. But I want to list just real quickly some of the benefits to praising God and the importance of doing this on a regular basis. And why we're we're talking about this over the next few weeks. Here's some benefits to praise. Number one, it changes our spiritual climate. There's something powerful that happens, especially when the people of God gather together and we begin to praise. Oh, praise the one who paid my debt, and raised my life up from the dead, right? There's something powerful about proclaiming that, about speaking it. There's something that, is, that happens on the inside of, of, of God's people as we lift him up and praise him. It's powerful, and it begins to work in us. There's a benefit that comes to praising as a corporate body of Christ together of lifting up. There's just nothing like it. Nothing like it in the entire world than when the people of God come together and begin to praise him, lift up the, the, the things of God, the worship of God back to him. It just, it begins to do amazing things. It changes the very atmosphere around us. It's, it's powerful. It's powerful. It, it, it begins, you, you begin to feel things and the, the emotions that go along. With, with just worshiping God. God gave us th- those emotions on purpose. Why? So that we can feel and recognize him at work in our lives. And it's, it's an important thing to recognize that it changes the atmosphere. It changes things around you. You want to you wanna see things change maybe in your family? Man, when maybe nobody else is there because nobody else understands it, put on some praise and worship music in your home and just begin to praise God. You want to change the tone in your home. Maybe there's a lot of strife and and ugly talk and stuff going on in your home. Begin to praise God in your home and lift up the the things of God and declare the things of God over your home by praising. And it'll change the atmosphere in your home. You want to change the tone at work? As you're driving to work, just begin to declare the praises of God. It'll change the atmosphere. I don't mean you want to change... The, the atmosphere in, in your classroom at school, begin to pray about it and praise God as you're going to school. You can, you can change, you can literally change the atmosphere of the things that are going on around you when you praise God. Scripture talks about it all throughout Scripture and it can happen for you, but we, you have to be willing to put it to work. Amen? It changes the spiritual climate. Here's the second thing is it... Praise fulfills your primary purpose as a created being. You realize we were created to worship God. That's one of the things that, that, that God created us for is just to worship him. Do you know that there, there are angels that, that are, are worshiping in heaven 24-7, just worshiping God. Why? Because there's something powerful that happens when that, is, when that is going on. And when God's created beings who have the choice, the free will, whether to do that or not, when we choose to do it, there's just something amazing that happens. It's, it's a primary reason why that, that, that we were created because it, it does unbelievable things when we worship God. Here's the third thing. Praise empowers you to do great things. It empowers the people of God for the purpose that he has for us here on this earth. It empowers us. There's just just something about 
praising God and recognize, hey, I can't do this on my own. And praise is a, is a way of, of us seeing, God, we need you. We're, we're calling on you. We're lifting you up. God, go before us. In, in, in the course of this series, we're going to see stories of in Scripture how God used praise and worship to, to do amazing things for the people in Scripture. And he can do the same for us. These, the, these things I'm giving us right now are, are, are just kind of an outline. It's, it's setting the stage for where we're going to go throughout this series and the importance, the significance of what praise does for us. It's powerful. In this series, we're going to talk about what, uh, praise in song, praise in prayer, praise in battle. And today, I'm going to talk about praise in celebration. I don't know why I picked that one for today. <laughs> Praise in celebration. We see this in scripture. They would celebrate from time to time the, the, the accomplishments of God. And they would celebrate all that God had done and all that God was going to do. They, they had many different things, many, many different times and, and occasions that God had told them to memorialize. Hey, remember this. In fact, is he would tell them to, to build altars and, and uh, do different things, build memorials so that they would remember to celebrate what God had done and not just celebrate, but, but to tell their, their, uh, their next generations, their kids and grandkids, hey, this is what happened at this place. You see, you see that pile of stones right there? This is what God did in that moment. This is the great story. You, you, you're going to love this story because your great, 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 whatever was part of this army that, that did amazing things for God or was there and witnessed David when he beat the giant or, or whatever it might have been. And God told them, listen, you need to memorialize, you need to celebrate what took place in these moments. It's powerful. They had different feasts that would celebrate what God had done for them. Uh, the, the, the feast of Passover, the feast of unleavened bread, and so on and so forth. There, was, there were seven of them. And they would, they would celebrate with a feast what God had done. I mean, read a scripture in, in, in 2 Chronicles that talks about this. It says, the Israelites who were present in Jerusalem celebrated the festival of unleavened bread for seven days with great rejoicing while the Levites and priests praised the Lord every day with resounding instruments dedicated to the Lord. You see, it's not just something we've created today, but it, it's something that goes back thousands and thousands of years of the people of God taking opportunity to praise God for what he had done and would continue to do for them. It's powerful. We celebrate all kinds of things today. Last night, I took opportunity to to celebrate a come from behind win that the Royals came back and beat the Twins. They're only three and a half games back and charging, I hope. Um, Thursday night. Yeah. <laughs> I knew somebody would know where I was going with that. We got to celebrate our first Chiefs win of the season, right? So we have, we have things that we enjoy celebrating Right? And, and we can get behind some of the, you know, our, our, our favorite teams and all those kind of things. And we get, we get passionate about it. And there's nothing wrong with that. But let me just tell you, as the people of God, nothing should rival our anticipation and our excitement about praising the one who has done more for us than anybody else. Amen? It should be exciting to get together to each and every Sunday to praise God for what he's done this week. For pra to praise God for what he's going to do this coming week, right? That's why, that's why we get together is, is, is to be able to just praise God for what he's done and what he's going to do. 
And, and throughout Scripture, you see that happening. And, and yes, it's, it's fun to praise the things here on earth that we love to, to celebrate and get excited about. But it's so much more awesome. Whether we realize it or not, it, it has so much more consequence when we praise the one who has done so much for us. And in this, this time together, not just today, but on, on, on all Sundays, it should be about celebrating all the great things that God does for us and is doing in our midst, doing in our church in, in doing in our families. We, we should constantly be hearing and sharing testimonies of, man, this week God did this for us. Man, this week God's, God allowed us as a church to be able to do this for our community. This week, man, at work I got to do this and share what God's doing in my life. And others were blessed because of it. We get to come together. We get to celebrate. That's why testimony is so powerful and so important. And scripture talks about it because when you share the things that God is doing, you're celebrating. You're praising God. God, you're doing awesome things. And God, I can't wait to see what you're going to do next. God, I can't wait to see what you're going to do next in my life. God, I can't wait to take that time to spend like I do each and every morning of just reading your word and spending time with you. And God, I can't wait to hear the things that you're going you're gonna to speak to my heart because you're, you're, you're doing so much in my life. There's just, there should be an anticipation of daily. I get to praise God. I get to thank God. I get to uh, be a part of God, what you're doing. That's an awesome thing. That's the way Christians ought to live. That's, that's different than the world. It, it just, it, it's, it's not what the world, most people in the world would say or, or think or talk about. But as believers, as followers of Jesus, that's what sets us apart, right? It's because we get to praise the one who daily is doing in my life, is daily working in my life, is daily changing. And I get to celebrate that. And there's nothing that'll, that'll change your mindset, change your perspective, and cause you to live a life with purpose like praising God daily. Daily, just thanking him and, and, and praising him for all the good that's, that's, that's going on in our life. Yeah, it's, it's easier to look at the negative, isn't it? It's easier to, to look at all the, the, the other things and be negative. Especially when we find ourselves in those moments of, man, there's just a lot of, of bad going on right now. But when we, we choose to say, God, despite all that, I'm, I'm looking to you. I, I, I'm setting aside time to celebrate you, to lift you up, to honor you, to praise you. We do that regularly. It just resets our mind and it causes us to focus on the good things we know God will and can do versus all the things that in the world that aren't so good. And, and, and it changes us. And then, then we're able to go out into a world filled with a lot of not good and bring light into the darkness. Amen? And that's how we do it because we're filling ourselves with the things of God and we're allowing it to, to come forth regularly. We're filling ourselves and we're letting it come out. We're filling ourselves and it's, and it's showing forth as we praise God, it just, it just begins to make a difference. It begins to change things. It'll change in you first, and then it'll change the things around you. So there's, there's two main things that, that we celebrate, two main things that as believers, as the people of God, that, that we take time to celebrate. Now, there's a lot of things that we celebrate, but you can put them, in, in, in my opinion, in these two categories. And that's this. First of all, we celebrate God. We celebrate what he has done. We celebrate and we recognize in the midst of the things that we celebrate, whether it's a, a, a birthday as a church or a birthday as a person, right? As a family member, as a friend. When we go to birthday, it's an opportunity to celebrate. Man, God has given, blessed us with another year. God's blessed us with, with more time here on the earth. It, it, maybe it's, it's, it's celebrating our favorite team like we talked about. It's, it's an opportunity to say, God, how awesome is it that we get to enjoy the good things that you've blessed us with here on this earth? It, it's certainly not about, you know, putting on a pedestal people because people will let us down, right? But it is about recognizing that, man, what a great thing it is that we can enjoy the blessings that we have here on this earth. And there are many. 
And we can focus on that rather than focus on the negative. So when we celebrate what God is doing or what God has done, what do we do? We're putting the focus on him. We should celebrate God in all things, in all things. And the second thing is we should celebrate others. We should celebrate others. It's good to celebrate what God is doing in the lives of people. Man, God, you're doing awesome things in that family. Or God, you're doing so much good through that person. God, I'm so thankful for that. Here's what the world says. Compete against and try to outdo the other person. Try to be better than or try to look better than. And that's just not God's way. You see, Scripture says when we elevate others, God will elevate us. When we, when we notice and put other people ahead of ourselves, then God blesses us. And so what should we do? We should celebrate break God and we should celebrate others. Because that's what God wants of us. And when we do that, it just honors God. It just honors God. We should put others ahead of ourselves on a regular basis. Now, listen, I'm so thankful for all that God has done over the years for us here at VCC. And I, I know... Jen and I talk about it all the time. We wouldn't be where we are if it wasn't for the people of God that he's brought to us, the people that he's brought around us. And I often think about, especially on days like this, I think about those that have been with us from the very beginning. And I'm going to share a little bit more about that here in just a second. But I've got a video that allows a few of us staff to just share our heart about what it means to uh, ha, ha, be able to celebrate eight years as a church. And, and I'm gonna, we're going to play this video, and then out of, out of this video, during this video, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have a, a select group of people come and stand up here, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to share about those individuals as well. But if you would, go ahead and play that video. Hey, VCC family. Uh, it, it is a privilege to be able to celebrate eight years with you today. You know, uh, eight years ago when we got started, we, we had no idea what God had in store for us. Jen and I, we, we had a dream. We had a desire. We knew God had laid something on our heart, uh, and it was to do something here in Grain Valley. Uh, but you can never for sure know exactly all the things that, that God is going to do. Eight years of Valley Community Church. It is so crazy to think about. I can remember driving around Grain Valley and having a vision that God gave us and a dream in our hearts um, to reach our community, to reach our city. We truly fell in love with Grain Valley and felt like God told us that a church needed to be planted there and, and lives needed to be reached. And we're so grateful that we've gotten to be a part of that over eight years. It's, it's incredible. Uh, I remember uh, all the, the families. There were just a few of us that as we got started, uh, they were willing to uh, answer that call along with us to, to come here to Grain Valley and start Valley Community Church and do the things necessary uh, to make uh, us successful as a church. And, and we, we worked hard and, and did a lot of things uh, early on, uh, just waiting to see what God would do. And it was, it was such a blessing. I'm so thankful for that we, we still have many of those families with us uh, today. Wow, Valley Community Church, eight years. I mean, uh, the first five seemed like a blur. <laughs> you weren't here. Uh, and it's, it's been incredible to see all that God has done. I'm thankful for the team that God has assembled here uh, with us at, at VCC. I'm thankful for our staff and, and those that work so hard, our many volunteers that that make it possible for us to do what we do each and every week. Wow, eight years as a church, uh, just an incredible uh, moment to celebrate in time. Uh, it's been six years for me and my family being a part of VCC, and we've loved every minute of it, from starting Valley Youth uh, when we came on uh, to where it's at now has been such a journey, to, to meeting so many different new families that have come in and been a part of, of what God is doing in here. We've seen miracles take place, lives forever change. Uh, we've seen people who we thought would never come uh, to know who Jesus was, now serving faithfully uh, in their everyday life. Uh, it's been, a, it's just a huge blessing to be a part of what God has been doing. We've seen us begin at very small beginnings, and yet today 
God has built upon that. We, uh, at the beginning, we didn't, we didn't have the things that we have now, but over time, God's, God's blessed us. We now have a daycare. We have uh, screen printing. Uh, we, we have event space. Uh, we have a coffee shop now right here in Grain Valley. And I, I believe that God's going to just continue to build upon what he's already doing. And the, the number of folks that are joining us each and every Sunday for worship is, is an awesome sight to see. Why? Because God is doing incredible things and the, the impact on lives is, is wonderful to see. There's something special about celebrating uh, a year of work, let alone eight years, but what we are celebrating, I think it's good to reflect on that. We're not just celebrating a church being open. We're celebrating lives being impacted. We're celebrating souls being saved. We're celebrating children and families coming to know God. And so I just want to say on this eighth year of celebrating Valley Community Church, thank you to all of you who have led to this. Every hard work and, and every day and, and night you sacrifice just to give to the kingdom of God, to support Pastor Jason and our church in furthering the kingdom and furthering the message of Christ to this city. And I'm so excited for the years to come and to see what God is going to do in us and through us. I love what we get to be a part of each and every Sunday and coming and, and worshiping together with each and every one of you. It's, it's because of you. God foresaw years ago as Jen and I were praying about what it is that God wanted us to do. It, it was because of, of each and every one of the people that we've seen God impact through the ministry at VCC. It's because of each one of you that faithfully give and serve on Sundays. And, and we're so thankful for all that you do. And we're thankful for uh, the, the many things that, that God is going to continue to do in us. You know, in Scripture, God told them to, to look back and remember the things that He had done. In fact, is He told them to build memorials so that he, they would be able to tell their kids and grandkids what God had done. You know, in the same way, we, we take time and we celebrate. We, we look at the things that, that God has done. I think back over eight years and I think of how many people have come through the doors, how many lives have been changed, and seeing families come to know Jesus I don't think that'll ever get old, and there's nothing greater than that. Um, thank you to everybody who's made that possible. We absolutely know that we couldn't have done any of this without you. You jumped on board, bought into the vision of what God was going to do, and you allowed him to use you to reach our community, and we are so thankful to be on this journey with you. And we're so excited to see all that God is going to continue to do over the next eight years, 10 years, 20 years, uh, believing how God is going to continue to use us to impact the city of Grain Valley. One of the cool things about Grain Valley is it's continuing to grow, continuing to flourish, and I'm just believing that as Grain Valley continues to grow, so is VCC, and we're going to be able to grow in our way that we love our community. And so excited about what God has been doing, but even more excited about what God is going to do. And, and of course, we don't live in the past. We're constantly looking towards the future, but we live right here in the present. And, and remembering what he has done helps us to be better where we are. And looking forward to what we know he's going to do gives us an excitement about where we're going as a church and as a, a family. And so we're so excited. Jen and I couldn't be more excited for all the things that we believe that God is going to do. And uh, we're, we're thankful for all of those that are going to be a part of it in the days to come. There, there's going to be some pictures um, from just uh, our time back when we first got started. They're going to kind of scroll through here that you'll see. Uh, and, and, and many of those that are in these pictures from the very beginning um, are standing here with us today. Uh, I'm so thankful for these families that are represented here. There are others that, that couldn't be here today. There uh, was one family that, that texted me and said, we're so sorry, we're sick, and so we could, can't be there today. But um, there, there were just a handful of families, and, and these are some of those that started with us from the very beginning. But what we can say is those families that were part of coming with us to start VCC, 
every one of those families is still with us today. And that is unheard of in church planting. They say you can plan or prepare for at least 80% of those that you start with will not be with you in two years. But something that, that is unique about what God's doing here at VCC and has done here at VCC is all of these families that, that started with us are still on the journey with us today. They bought in, they believe in, in the, the long-term vision of reaching this community and the surrounding communities for, for Jesus. And it's, it's certainly not about building a brand or elevating individuals. It is about pointing people to Jesus. And I'm so thankful that, that these individuals have been a part of serving this church from day one and even before. That is awesome. And that is worth celebrating. Amen. Thank you guys. Thank you guys for all that you do and all that you have done. You can be seated. They don't want to be in the limelight any longer than that. But I'm thankful for people like these guys. And I, I appreciate them letting me put some attention on them this morning. Because it, it, it matters and it's important. It's important to celebrate. Because we, we can easily miss, we can forget. But it's worth recognizing that God is doing something awesome. He's doing something amazing, and we all get to be a part of it. We all get to get, get to participate in what God's doing. And when you know, hey, God's called me to this. God's called me to be a part of this. And I'm just believing that, that there are great things. It doesn't mean that it hadn't been hard. It doesn't mean that there hasn't been difficult. It doesn't mean that there hasn't been times when we wanted to give up or quit or walk away. There have been plenty of those times. But when you, when you push through, when you just continue to say, God, it, it's, it's not about whether it feels right or feels good or, or whether there's, everything is perfect. In my, it's, it's about doing it because we know there's a purpose behind it. There no, we know there's reason for it. And that there's so much good that happens when we choose to take time and celebrate. Why, why do we do this? Why do we take time and celebrate? Let me tell you this real quick. Number one, it reminds us of who? It reminds us of who. We, we celebrate because of him. We celebrate because of what God has done. And it puts us in remembrance of God. It's only because of you. The only reason we could, we could do this, the only reason Jen and I could have made this possible or made this happen is not because of us. There's no way. It's, it's dis, in spite of us or our abilities. It's only because of God. And, and it puts us in remembrance of, God, we're relying on you. We're trusting in you. It's because of him. It reminds us of the who. Deuteronomy says this, He alone is your God, the only one who is worthy of your praise. Amen? The one who has done these mighty miracles that you have seen with your own eyes. I thought that was so true for us as a church. It's only because of him. It's because of what he has done. Here's the second thing. It reminds us of what? It reminds us of what he has done. Not what we've done, but what he's done. All the, all the miracles, all the, all the life change, all the tremendous things that we've seen over the course of eight years, it's all because of him. The, the, the what that has taken place, and there's been a lot of it, has been because of what God has done. And I'm so thankful for that. We run with purpose. Remember that in our life? We run with purpose. And the, and, and the purpose that he has placed on our life it is, is to reach people, to see great things accomplished. But it's him who enables. It's him that empowers. It's him that gets the glory. We're doing it for him but it's, it's because of him that we get to see these amazing things happen. It reminds us of the what. And then lastly, it reminds us of why. Why do we do the things that we do? Why is it that God has put us here? It's to make heaven more crowded. Amen. We say that all the time. It's, it's, 
it's the vision that he's put on our, we, we want to make heaven more great. We want to see more people come to know Jesus. And that's a saying that, that has been used before, but it's, it's a saying that holds true for what God wants for us. We want to see people come to know Jesus. We want to see life change take place. That's why we exist as a church, is for the purpose of glorifying God and to see life change take place. Amen? And we get to be a part of it. And I'm so thankful for that. Before we wrap up the night, we want to give you an opportunity to respond to the message. If you've never accepted Jesus to be your Lord and Savior, and tonight is the night that you want to make that decision, repeat this prayer after me. Dear Jesus, come into my life. Forgive me of my sins. I want to live the rest of my life living for you. In your name we pray. Amen. The Bible says that if you say a prayer similar to that, it's not about the words that you say, but the heart behind it, that your name is written forever in eternity. And we want to be a help in you kickstarting your relationship with Jesus. And so if you have questions that you need answered about what that looks like, you can message us here on YouTube or you can email us at vccinfo1 at gmail.com. And we'll get some information put in your hands to help you kickstart your relationship with Jesus. We love you guys so much. We hope that you guys have an incredible week. And we'll see you back here next Sunday night, 7 o'clock, as we continue our series, Praise the One.